Hi, I'm Greg. Welcome to Affect Studio. I'm here to review some recent model original series and custom shop Gibsons and see how they compare to my 985 Tokai Love Rock, which has long been my benchmark for a quality Gibson style instrument. Now, for anybody not familiar with Tokai, as with most of the higher end Japanese instruments from the period, they were considered to be better guitars than Gibson or Fender were producing. Most needed upgraded pickups, but the woods and construction were superb. And the better woods also contributed to them being significantly lighter than most of the guitars Fender and Gibson were building, especially in the 70s. Looking back, I would say the biggest difference was that Tokai were producing vintage style instruments at a point where Gibson and Fender weren't. As such, a number of players who owned 50s or 60 model Les Pauls in particular, which were completely irreplaceable, would tour with these. So having said all that, how's it sound? I bought this one in 1991 while shopping for gear for the original version of the studio. Uh, it wasn't on the shopping list and I needed every cent for the studio, but it was just that good that I had to buy it. You know, it's been an asset that's been used countless times in the last 30 odd years. Now it had a pair of Damasio PAF Pro pickups in it when I got it and currently has an early set of Gibson burst buckers, a one there and a two in the bridge. And um, I added the Bixby about 18 years ago. I've long been a fan of P90s and have owned a number of P90 equipped guitars, including a Tokai Love Rock Jr, which I really liked and had to sell at one point. Um, now interestingly, this is actually only the second Gibson I've ever actually owned. Um, the first one was a 76 Gibson SG that I bought around 86 and only kept for a bit over a year. Uh, it was nice to play, sounded good, not as nice to play as this one. Uh, the biggest problem being it just didn't stay in tune, even using 11 to 50 gauge strings that I was doing. Uh, having those rubbery necks you hear about some SGs having, um, and so yeah, you have to be very careful with that. Um, so at the end of 2020, I played this one and was just blown away by it. It just sounded really nice, really resonant, ringing a live guitar. Uh, intonation was completely out. Um, the bridge was you know, up at a, quite a sharp angle or so far back and it still wasn't in tune. Uh, but once I sorted that out, this has become you know, a guitar that I just really like. After buying this, I read up on the current model Gibsons and discovered they had new management and starting in 2019, which is when this one was made, had improved the quality. Some people saying the current original series were getting you know, close to the custom shop models in sound and construction. I came across this one a little while later, which is also from 2019 and sounds completely different, uh, but equally good. And so being a little crazy and loving this new junior so much, I found a custom shop model that was very lightweight and has a 60s slim taper neck.
So these two sound quite different to each other, which I think is down to a number of factors. First off, it's at least half a kilo lighter, which is significant. Uh, it also has the skinnier, slim taper, later 60s sort of neck, whereas the TV finish one has the 50s style, you know, they call it the baseball bat, not quite that thick, but, you know, thicker neck. And that definitely changes, you know, the response of the guitar, the way it resonates and rings out. Uh, also, the pickup on this one is closer to the bridge, which I had to do because the um, when I made the double cut, the neck joint wasn't strong enough when they had the route right at the end of the fingerboard like it is with the single cut versions um, now this has become my most used guitar and um, I really like this guitar but when I got it it was really disappointing and basically unusable and the problem being that these pickups were completely unmatched now I'd seen somebody else selling one that was slightly older where they said that it was, um, you know, the pickups were unusable as they came from the factory. And I just thought, yeah, well, it's just probably just them. That shouldn't be the case with a custom shop instrument. But lo and behold, plugged it in and it was completely unbalanced. Um, they just didn't balance volume wise or tonally. Now I could adjust the controls and get the sort of work, but that's not the way it should be. So at the moment it has a set of pickups in it that I wound myself, which is a bit of a hobby and I'm pretty happy with those. Um, now the other problem was the bridge. Now I really like the adjustable bridge that's on the Junior, it's a ABM bridge and it has slotted saddles, uh, which means of course it lines up the same way every time. Um, and when I put it on this, I discovered that these bridge posts are actually offset. So that when I put it on, the strings are hanging off the side of the guitar. Uh, and I forget what brand this one is, it's a really nice bridge too, but I do prefer the ABM on the other one. Um, but yeah, there's just no option to use it. Now I know that in the 50s and 60s, you know, the tooling was less accurate and therefore you did get guitars with, you know, offset posts and sometimes the pickups really weren't well matched to each other. Um, so maybe Gibson were just going for the authenticity with the custom shop vintage reissues. Uh, but personally, I think they could have skipped that part of it. A mate of mine alerted me to this one on Facebook Marketplace, another 2019 model, almost unused, selling for a very good price. The seller was a metal guitarist who discovered these really aren't made for modern metal, and so was selling it to buy another ESP. <laughs> I've always found explorers extremely comfortable to play seated or standing. They balance beautifully. Um, you know, my arm sits up here in a way that I really like. Uh, the only thing you need to watch is you don't, you know, bump the ends of it here against doorways and walls or the headstock because of the extra overhang and I've done it too many times already. Um, but nothing else sounds like an explorer. And it must be to do with the body shape and thickness because on paper, these are basically the same as all the other guitars I've just been listening to, apart from the, you know, the Love Rock Les Paul style with the maple top. They're all, you know, mahogany body and neck and rosewood fingerboards. And so just listening to them acoustically, you'd think they should be in a similar ballpark of sound, but yeah, nothing at all alike. And um, yeah, I really like my Explorer. Last year I went to try an original series SG with a Maestro Vibrola. I went to the shop that had one advertised and brought along my um, SG Junior as a reference, mainly for the feel, but also just as a quality guitar. Um, now, I got there and couldn't see the guitar anywhere. Uh, the salesman didn't know anything about it, so, you know, had to play some other ones I had. Now, they had the other original series, 61 SG, which has the sideways vibrola. They call them both 61, but actually the Maestro wasn't released till about 63, I think. Um, and so I had a play of that, and otherwise on paper the specs are exactly the same. Um, didn't like it as much as the Junior, it was still a nice guitar, and that sideways vibrola went out of tune basically the second you touched it. Now they had the custom shop version of the same guitar with the sideways vibrola, and so I had a play of that. And listening to them acoustically, uh, side by side, they actually sounded pretty much identical. Um, the custom shop one felt just slightly nicer, um, but you know, it certainly wasn't a better sounding guitar. The woods didn't sound better. Um, now, I really wanted to try the Maestro, 
And so um, they had a Jimi Hendrix model custom shop SG Custom with the Maestro, worth about three times the price of the regular custom shop SG. Um, now I'd already handed the salesman my junior and um, he was actually quite excited by that. He seemed genuinely impressed and um, you know, was loving it, which was interesting considering he's a salesman presumably trying to move them, uh, but also the fact that you know, we were standing next to a wall of um, you know, a lot of brand new Gibsons. Um, and anyway, so I played the custom shop Hendrix one and um, yeah, it was the least impressive of all of them unplugged. Um, just didn't really resonate well or anything. It just seemed a bit dead and dull. Uh, looked cool, so it's like they made the finish look good and didn't worry about the guitar like it was going to be sold to collectors who wouldn't play it, maybe. I don't know. Uh, didn't like the Murphy Labs finish. It just felt old and crusty rather than old and worn in, which I really like. Uh, I really like the Maestro, though. I was preparing to leave, thanking the guy for his help and mentioned that I was you know, disappointed that the original series Maestro version wasn't there. And he said, hang on, let me just go and check something. And he went off and returned sort of five or ten minutes later with the Gibson box and a big grin. Turns out that it um, hadn't sold and been put back in the storeroom and was sitting under a pile of boxes there and been forgotten about. Uh, clearly it had been there for a while as the strings were quite crusty um, and the price on it was significantly lower than the others. Uh, but when we played it and compared it to the other three, um, definitely it was the nicer of the four guitars they had that were, you know, the similar one, the two custom shop and the other original series. Now, not a lot in it, but it definitely, you know, was just a slightly nicer guitar. Um, now, not as resonant as the Junior, which I assume is to do with a little extra, you know, hardware weighing it down, uh, but, you know, really nice guitar. Now, they're still not perfect, as good as these now are. Uh, I went to adjust the neck pickup after I got it home and found that the pickup went up at an angle and after a bit of investigation I realized that actually the cover the pickup cover where it soldered to the base plate was actually there was a bulge there in the solder and so it was actually catching against the route and so you couldn't actually make it level again so I had to you know heat that up and then squeeze it to you know make it parallel with a base plate which fixed that and then the neck pickup volume control the pot I had to replace um, the taper was completely different so on about sort of eight and a half to nine was about the same volume as the bridge pickup on five um, so you know there's definitely some issues still but certainly you know overall the quality and sound of these you know is really good So having said there wasn't much difference beyond looks and feel between the custom shop and the original series versions, uh, this one seems to disprove that. Uh, it's also worth a lot more than the others I've been playing, uh, though a lot less than that Hendrix you know, custom shop one that I tried. Um, so this is a 2020 60th anniversary reissue of a 1960 
you know, model. Now it has the thickest neck of all the ones I've been playing apart from the TV finish special uh, which is a bit thicker again. Apparently in 1960 they changed the neck dimensions three times um, in that one year and so for the anniversary models they actually did the same thing. So this is version 1 which is closer to a 59 profile, apparently slightly slimmer and they got slimmer as the year went on. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic and just you know feels really quite amazing. Researching these, I saw claims from Gibson and others that this is the closest they got to getting it right as far as a vintage correct reissue. Now, if you look at this alongside the Tokai, assuming that this is you know vintage correct, the Tokai actually looks almost identical. Now, obviously, you're saying you're crazy, Greg, because this one looks so much nicer, which it does. Now, the top on this is beautiful, and I like the feel of the nitro cellulose they use on the custom shop ones slightly more than the stuff they use on the original series, and the original series is just slightly nicer than the polyurethane used on the Tokai, and the Tokai has a plain top that looks a lot like the um, Les Paul Deluxe as they made in the 70s. Um, so visually, this one, you know, hands down to me, for my taste, is the winner. If you ignore that stuff, Dimensions as far as, you know, shape of the body, the top carve, the angle of the neck, the headstock angle and shape, etc. You realise there's actually very little between these guitars. Tokai actually got these right long time before Gibson did. Tokai has still been made in Japan and they also produce some models in China which I have no experience with. I don't know if Gibson will be able to continue with the quality of these original series models. Hopefully they will. Hopefully it won't just be a limited thing where in a few years the quality sort of starts to drift off. Uh, but at the moment they're certainly just, you know, superb. And even the ones I didn't like as much are still, you know, really nice guitars. It's just that these other ones are, you know, extra nice. Um, now in general, and definitely with this one, the custom shop ones are slightly nicer to play. Um, they've got custom bucker pickups which sound quite different to the burst buckers that the original series are using. And I think some of the custom shop ones still use the burst buckers and I used to use those. Uh, but yeah, different sound with these. Where I personally like the custom shop ones better is a finish, which of course is a cosmetic thing mainly. They do feel slightly nicer to me as I said, but I think there's a depth to the colours and um, you know the woods they've used that make them look a lot you know, more pleasing to the eye. If you're into the vintage thing, which not everybody is, if you're not into vintage guitars, then, you know, there's no great appeal necessarily in a custom shop, one looking more authentically old. So as mentioned, these still aren't perfect. The pickups in the custom shop special were particularly disappointing and should never have been allowed to leave the factory that way. Uh, likewise, the you know, pickup cover on the SG, the neck pickup should never have been able to you know, pass quality control and whoever actually set it up clearly knew what they were doing because I could also get it to, I could adjust the height by removing the pickup and then carefully putting it back in so it was parallel with the strings. It was only when you went to adjust it that um, it tilted. Uh, so someone was you know, doing that rather than actually dealing with the issue. The Tokai wasn't perfect either, of course. It already had replacement pickups when I bought it. I think the first time I changed the strings, I discovered that the bridge rattled really badly, so I quickly replaced that. Um, but overall, the quality of those was more consistent than the stuff that Gibson and Fender used to produce uh, in the 70s in particular, but also into the 80s. Now, most of the Gibsons that are around are playing better than when they first left the factory, as they've been to good luthiers who have set them up and made them perform you know, the way they should. Um, I have a couple of luthier mates who used to be quite scathing of the quality of Gibsons as they left the factory, saying, look, you know, they shouldn't be left up to us to make them playable and make them you know, reach their full potential. But these current ones really, apart from these couple of issues I had, and apart from the pickups in the special, the other ones are relatively minor, they really are you know, quite consistently high quality. At this point, I'd say these are all actually pretty much on par with each other quality-wise. They all sound and play slightly different, being different models, different size necks, etc. Um, but, you know, while the custom shop ones are slightly nicer, it's not a huge difference. And the uh, Tokai and the original series, there's not much difference between those either, really. And so, um, yeah, can't really go wrong with any of them. As far as I know, the current Tokai is made in Japan are still same sort of quality. Haven't played a recent one. I did read somewhere that 85 was supposed to be the peak year for um, Japanese Tokai's, which is when mine was made. So that might be the case, and that would be nice to know. Um, but probably not the case. I've played some from the 90s that were, you know, quality-wise, you know, equal. So, um, yeah, my experience is the Japanese stuff is usually pretty consistent, which Gibson seem to be doing now as well, which is great. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you soon.